Front page of the Sunday Telegraph. Iran launches swarm of kamikaze drones at Israel. That's not the full story, actually. It's uh, drones. Uh, this was also uh, missiles as well. We saw that uh, they were intercepted by the US. Also, the United Kingdom involved as well, as well as uh, Israel itself. Iran has launched an unprecedented attack on Israel, unleashing a barrage of missiles, rockets and drones. The interesting part about this is they have come from Iran itself and not just from the proxies, which we would believed would be the case. This attack had been widely uh, speculated to be happening. All the intelligence coming out of the United States said an attack was imminent. Joe Biden, of course, warning Iran, do not attack Israel. Of course, Israel then went ahead and did exactly that. Uh, Steph has just contacted us via WhatsApp saying, I think Iran has been wanting to do this for some time. They would like nothing more than to destroy Israel. The question is, what happens from here? Of course, uh, we know that Netanyahu has a war cabinet uh, briefing. Also, the G7 are convening to meet. And, and I suppose the question is, how worried are you about the escalation in the Middle East? Please let us know, 0344 499 1000. You can also WhatsApp us to the same number. You can also text us, text the word talk in your message to 87 trouble to you, and you can X us at talk TV. Leave a space, then hashtag breakfast doctors. So then the question remains, what about the geopolitics? What about the political forces at play here? We were just talking about uh, the rhetoric and trying to dial it down and, and the United States actually saying to Israel, do not respond to Iran. Well, joining us now is Dr. Roger Gawalb, who uh, is here to talk about the wider geopolitics. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, David. Can I, I start by asking you that question? How worried are you about the escalation in the Middle East? I'm not uh, all that terribly worried, but it really depends on uh, what Israel determines the targets of this attack actually were, uh, whether this was just a token retaliation or something more serious. And of course, it also depends on what Iran does, if anything, uh, before Israel reacts. So, so that's a really interesting point. And we knew this attack was imminent. The US intelligence said it was imminent, I think, back it on Wednesday, actually. Reports that the USA was preparing to intercept those missiles. And the USA told Iran, we will intercept those missile, missiles if you strike. Israel then also said it was strike back against Iran. So we knew this was coming. What, what, do, you, what do you sort of read into the fact that it didn't just come from the proxies? It came from Iran itself. That being said, of course, Iran said it would act. And I think in many ways, Iran had no choice but to act because otherwise they would be hollow words. Um, both your good self and a lot of other people are starting this at the point where the uh, general was assassinated in Syria. That, that's not where this begins, David. Um, basically, um, it begins with October the 7th, and the fact that uh, it's pretty clear that General Zahidi is the man who pushed the button and activated Hamas to commit October 7th. That's why he was taken out. Yep. So in, in a sense, it's not Israel that started this, it's Iran through its proxy Hamas. Now, the idea, I'm sorry. No, no, carry on. The idea that Israel should not retaliate um, is, is really not something I ascribe much credence to. Um, you have a sovereign nation which has invaded and attacked another sovereign nation, and uh, no nation could stand by and do nothing about that. They were warned. Um, and then I said that it depends on where the targets were. Uh, there's a lot of attention being paid to things such as um, it may have been the case that the Dimona nuclear reactor was actually a target, but they missed. The Iranian um, missiles and um, drones are not all that accurate. They're not the best in the world. And of course, if Iran was trying to blow up a nuclear reactor in Israel, rather than just make kind of a token show of force, that's certainly going to change uh, the level and degree of Israel's retaliation, uh, which could be to simply wipe out, you know, the Iranian regime uh, to something much less moderate. But I really don't see them sitting by and doing nothing and saying, okay, we're quits, because 
they aren't really quits because Iran started this by October the 7th. Now, now you could also argue that actually these strikes were very targeted. They were precision strikes. When you look at the collateral damage, it's pretty minimal. And, and this is what many defence analysts were saying to me in the week. They said that actually when Iran strikes, they will be very careful as to the targets that they strike for fear of inflaming and escalating that. Do you buy that? No, I don't. I mean, Iran, ha Israel has the most precise and efficient uh, weaponry in, in the world, really, whereas Iran has uh, stockpiles of, of cheaper uh, less effective weapons, but if they come at you in the hundreds and the thousands, then they're going to be very damaging. Um, it's it's not U.S. and U.K. and Jordanian jets which took out these uh, missiles, David. Uh, it's basically the Israeli Iron Dome defense system, which got most of them. Um, however, uh, quite a large number, some say most were actually uh, taken out uh, outside of Israeli uh, uh, airspace. Um, so I don't think that they were carefully targeted not to do any serious damage, but that's what's being looked at because if they were targeted to hit, say, that nuclear reactor, it's, a, it's another kettle of fish. I think this all started back in December. I, I announced on American television, as did many others, that Iran was one week away from actually having a nuclear bomb. Uh, and that within a month or two, they would have several nuclear bombs. And I think, uh, to use a word you used, uh, that emboldened them and moved them forward, plus uh, Joe Biden unbelievably uh, giving them $6 billion. That emboldened them to push the button through General Zahidi uh, on the 7th of October. And uh, it's all been downhill from there. So I, I think I, I think Israel's response will be measured if all this is is a somewhat token retaliation. But uh, while I'm not expecting uh, escalation into World War Three by any means, I do think it could become more severe. Firstly, if Iran does anything else, uh, and secondly, uh, if Israel discovers that this was meant to be a much more serious attack, you mentioned the states. Uh, Joe Biden has said to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu in a phone call that Israel will uh, America, I'm sorry, will not be involved in any offensive measures that Israel takes. But reading between the lines, they certainly will be there uh, for the defensive measures. Uh, absolutely, Roger. And of course, uh, Biden saying that the uh, the support is ironclad. We also know the U.S. has moved the USS Eisenhower aircraft and three other warships closer to Israel. The United yes. Kingdom Prime Minister also condemned the reckless attack and said the U.K. would stand up for Israel's security. Roger, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed.